Please like and subscribe and go to ProPhotoEdits.com where you can download my Lightroom presets and Photoshop actions so you can follow along with this week's edit. So hey guys, hope everybody's doing well and had a good week. On this week's um, editing video, we're going to edit a shot from the, um, the paint shoot that I just did recently with Holly. And um, we got real messy and had a good time doing this shoot. It was really cold in my, uh, my outside studio space. Um, but um, we made a mess and had some fun. So this is with the uh, through the lens with the um, Z7 and 35 millimeter 1.4 art. Uh, Sigma art and also use the 58 1.4 G on some of the shots from this shoot since the room was a little bit tight That's about as far as I wanted to get away and um, I'm just gonna walk you through some of the uh, Some of the background stuff here to give you a little bit of background on how to light this um, These are just not really edited just put one of my presets on there and you can see that we progressively, you know, we started with just not getting the paint too too messy at first because um you don't want to get it all over the wrong places of the model and then can't take it off. Obviously, she had her makeup done beforehand, but this is how we lit it right here. This is the ring light that I wanted to use today. So I didn't really want to use high-speed sync or flash because it was cold. We were trying to move fast, and I didn't want a bunch of shadows everywhere. So what I did was I just put my, um, my ring light with a um, diffuser sock on it, and I have it on a really sturdy... Um, my C stand with a boom arm as you can see there so that way when I'm shooting down and when she was laying on the floor I can actually move the boom arm out so that the boom will be facing down and I can get nice even light from above so the uh, C stand when I'm shooting down would be directly above both of us you know I'd kind of move out of the way and just use live view and pop the screen up towards me and um, that way I can light it that way and I can adjust it move it back change the angle of it and it's just it's fast it's nice and it's even and um, I can shoot faster because I don't have to wait for recycle time and deal with a big huge uh, 48 inch um, parabolic in here so it worked out well I, I generally use this when I want to shoot fast and just want to get what I see and um know what I'm going to get straight out of camera so this is just some more behind the scenes footage before we get into the edit and the raw is in the description to download and follow along and also I have a curves adjustment in there for free that um will help you get um nice punchy brown eyes so so this is the before and after of what we're going to do today in uh, Lightroom and Photoshop so stick around for the whole video and follow along so all right guys here we go let's get into this edit um this is straight out of the camera on the z7 35 millimeter sigma art um, on the ftz adapter um, for this shot um, i used the 58 1.4 on some of these other shots as well um, i just chose this shot because this is the only shot that i've um, edited so far and once we're done with this shot today um, with the preset and the Lightroom, I mean the Photoshop actions, we're going to end up here. Something nice and punchy and, um, you know, Instagram ready. Something fun as well. So, you know, I just chose this shot because it's a close-up. And um, it would help, you know, people that are, you know, struggling with close-ups um, get into how we do it, you know, all the close work. So... I'm also going to give you guys something really cool, a, a custom um, adjustment, an action. Well, it's not really an action. It's just something you can load into your curves tool. Um, the custom curves that I've made to make the uh, browns in the eyes um, really pop. As you can see, you see the difference? And uh, that's the custom curve. There it is. It's sharp now. That's the custom curve that I've made for you guys. Um, and you can download that in this description as long with, along with the... Um, the raw file and uh, everyone that has my um, my action set and my um, Lightroom presets will be able to follow along, you know, identically. So, you know, we were just progressively getting, you know, messier as the shoot went on just because you can't take paint off once it's on and uh, we got it all over his skin. So, um, we were just having fun. It was a fun shoot. And um, had a lot of a lot of great images that I need to edit from this. So let's go here. And um, first thing I did, and this is you'll be able to follow along. Um, PPE toning one preset, and you can see that um, it's a little bit underexposed there. 
But I, I'm going to do some stuff to this preset that I normally wouldn't do or need to do because this is, uh, you know, a one-off type of shot. A lot of bright pinks and, and the blues and, you know, punch that um, we're going to need as far as having the, uh, the contrast there as well um, and brightening the colors. And then we're going to change the color of the bra later on to match. But um, let's just go from one to one and I'll show you exactly how I did it with this preset um, you might not ever need to do this again but um, we'll see so actually let's start up here the first thing I did was shadows to 79 whites to 33 blacks to 26 3326 clarity was plus 11 I don't normally add that much but it was fitting on this image vibrance plus 80 saturation plus 22 that's extreme that's what I'm talking about on this image this is an extreme image um, and then now we have to fix the fact that she looks like an orange. <laughs> okay. So. Back here in your colors. What you're going to do is you're going to go down to the saturation. And on the orange. Have it on. Minus 49. Okay we're getting close now. Plus 12. Plus 12 on the yellow. Minus 2 on the green, plus 24 on the aqua. Minus 1. Magenta was zeroed out. Okay. And I turned the split toning off for this image and um, see if I did anything down here on the shadows. Okay, so there we have it. Um, now that's what we're going to take into Photoshop. So as you can see, um, what we did, something that's kind of drastic here. And actually I think, yeah, I changed the uh, color balance to 46. 55 on the temperature Okay, yeah perfect So now we have something that um, we really bumped up the uh, the saturation all the colors You know that we're going to take into Photoshop But we have our skin looking natural. That's what you want You just want natural looking skin so we can build the base from there the colors are punchy um, You know from the preset alone and then we bumped up the saturation um, but we didn't want it to look like an orange, obviously, so this um, just take this into Photoshop and then um, work on it from there. Okay, so the first thing we want to do now in Photoshop is just duplicate the background. So, Command J, and that'll duplicate your background, or you can go here and duplicate layer. And now we can edit this first one, and um, I'm going to you know speed up some of this as you guys know watch the other videos um, if you want to get to the fun stuff what we're going to do right now is just I'm going to you know circle some blemishes with the patch tool just circle them and drag them away um, areas like this it's easy to get rid of them like that so you can do as little or as much of this as you want. Um, just try to drag the areas to a, to a lighter spot. Like this, you drag it up. You wouldn't drag it over. Um, when it comes to like stray hairs like that, 
just do the spot healing brush tool make it smaller and you can draw over it and it'll get rid of it pretty easily you can see right here in the middle just draw over all those little areas so how much of this you want to fix is totally up to you for all you guys that already know these steps you feel free to just jump ahead all right so now we're going to get rid of some of the lines um the under eyes and stuff like that so duplicate that layer again the only reason i do this is because this can be tricky and you might need to blend them again all right so just grab the line where the shadows are right there uh, let me make sure I get it perfect drag it down a little bit all right cool that'll look good now what you can do is you can drag this opacity down a little bit you want a more natural look, but you don't want to look. See the difference? This is the first step that I do. Um, and it's totally up to you how much of it you want or don't want. And now, this area right here is going to be the hardest because it's in the shadow area. There's paint on her face where we normally drag it. That will work for now for the first part of the fix. Okay, now I'll show you how we're gonna fix the rest of this stuff. So what I'll do is, I'll just, um, since this is my top layer here, what I'll do is start out with frequency separation as we always do. Radius is 10 on this, that looks good, you can see the eyes are kind of clear. I might even take it to, let's go to 12 on the radius. Eyes are still, you know, distinguishable. All right, now I set up our frequency separation here. Now on the lower frequency layer, we're going to go up here and to the lasso tool. And what we're going to do is set the feather to 12 since we set the radius to 12 whatever your radius is is what your feather is um, just going to drag out an area I usually do forehead bridge of nose and one go up to filter down to blur Gaussian blur and if you go too far, of course, you get ridiculous Barbie doll. If you go too low, it's not doing enough. Um, so I think 8.5 is going to look okay on this. And just keep repeating this process. All the areas. Yeah. Avoid the paint course um, you want to hit the arms and if it was cold man it was like this we shot this on a day when it was I think it was like the high was like eight and we're in my studio, we had the heater. Well, this isn't my real studio, this is my outside area that um, I shoot messy stuff like this in. Um, and that'll smooth that out a bit. My real studio is inside with the canvases and everything. I have some cool stuff coming up for you guys in there. Now get your lines a little bit straighter than I'm doing mine because I've already edited this image. like. So I'm, I'm just showing you how the process is. So I might speed along a little bit. Um, 
what you don't want to do when you're doing this is draw like make an area like this and get the um, the creases in it you know or the areas where the, the nose meets the face you don't want that you want to make sure you only hit and I'm not going to do her nose because there's, there's nothing going on in her nose that would um, warrant that um, I hit all these areas I'm trying to avoid the paint because it would just look sloppy and it would be a dead giveaway that there's some skin blurring going on there. Even though I use my relatively, you know, small, a smaller amount. Um, okay, so now that we've done that, it just smoothed out the skin a bit. And that's looking good. Alright, so what I'm going to do is Command Alt Shift E and it's going to put a, a flattened layer that we can edit of everything that we've done so far on the very top. Um, what I'll do again real quick is you see the lines um, in the boobs. We just kind of get rid of those and drag those out. They're not lines, they're veins, sorry. Um, and I think in the original I got rid of all these little marks here as well. You can do that. I'm not going to do over the top right here because I've already edited this image before. Um, but you spend as much time on this as you, as you want. Normally you wouldn't be dealing with this because it wasn't... It won't be four or five degrees when you're typically shooting, but it was on this day, so we had to deal with it. All right, so now we have that done. Let's go to the next step, which is skin perfection. It's my custom action that will help you guys fix all the extra details in the skin. All right, so that'll give you the um, instructions if you don't want to listen to my voice every single time. Click on this gray layer brush tool set your for, uh, foreground color to white background color to black and you can toggle between those two by hitting X on your keyboard while you're drawing instead of going back over here um, opacity I like to put it at 70 flow is always at 1 and the um, instruction that says 60 and that really depends on for opacity 60 to 70 whether you're using the tablet or not how much pressure you're applying on a on a mouse it really won't matter um, maybe 70 on a mouse um, 60 on a tablet I'm using a mouse today because my tablet I left it at my other spot so um, but I did the original with the mouse anyway so it doesn't really matter tablets are better but mouse will get the job done today um, this helper layer is just going to show you where the gradients are um, so we can see what the eye can't see, how we're going to fix the areas to make this look perfect. That's why it's called skin perfection. So on the gray layer, you have your brush tool, you have it on white. Your settings are 70 and 1. And we're just going to zoom in. And with anything that's darker, which our makeup artist did a great job, so there's not a lot of areas here. But we're just going to draw over them with white to make them make the gradient slowly change to where it's not really perceivable this area right here it's darker on this side obviously because of the way we lit it um, we're gonna just slowly let that gradient fall from this here let me turn on up where are you up there you are now you can see where my mouse is at um, it's gonna slowly fade from this light to this dark we just don't want it to be an obvious white dark with a line in the middle the highlights to the shadows should be nice and smooth that's what's gonna make your skin look perfect So I'm going to speed this up for you guys, but um, under the eyes here, 
we got with the patch tool we kind of got rid of the defined line under the eye you know because of the way the light was falling and just you know that's how people's faces look um, so now we don't have quite as much work to do here with this but as we toggle that layer on and off the helper layer is going to let us know where we need to spend more time there's a little line here on the side of the eye where her um, eyelashes were causing a shadow so we'll kind of kill that and on the side of this face the side of the cheek here I mean um, where I told you we were gonna have a little bit of an issue I mean the ring light is directly over her it's over both of us I had it up high you know so I could get it nice and soft but it's a little bit um, iris left I mean dead center would be right around here it's a little bit this side so that's why it's causing the shadow right here just a touch and I had it on just the slightest slant because um, I wanted to give some dimension and you know I was just eyeballing it I like what I saw and I know anything else I'm gonna have to fix anyway so I'm not gonna spend 25 minutes adjusting the light when I have it pretty much the way I want it so I'm gonna give you guys a cool little tip and the helper layer if you toggle this on and off and you bring your res down it'll really dig in and show you where the dark areas are so you can really get like if you want to go for the super barbie doll look just pull this down and you can see everything that you need to go the eye will never pick that up but if you go that far and fix it on that level um, and make it look perfect it definitely will look fake like a barbie doll so I'm going to speed this up for you guys and move on to the next step so we can keep this edit moving right along. So just to make these uh, edits faster for you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and do everything I need to do and then redo it for you in live time. So I just spent an extra 15-20 um, minutes drawing away all of the lines, you know, on the arm and on the boobs, uh, everywhere where her skin was freezing and you could see the red versus the white and the, the blood coming to the surface inside the skin perfection as we were just doing. Um, now that that's done, we already did the frequency separation. Um, the next step we're going to go, go into is we're going to change the bra color. So let's go ahead and um, change the color of the bra. Um, I'm going to show you how I did this um, so you can do it um, along with your image. So I'm going to turn this group off and I'm just going to show you um, how to start the whole process. First thing you want to do is grab a uh, hue saturation adjustment. We'll get rid of that one just because I'll show you how I do it. So go up to your, your adjustments and find hue saturation. Start that and um, now just focus on the bra right now. You want to hit colorize and that's going to change the whole image now look at the bra and just go for a color that you think is going to be decently close we know we're going to be in the blue area so let's go over here to the blue somewhere and um now you want to turn this command i and invert it so now we can't see it it's black layer so we're going to paint white on it at 100 percent to bring that color in and um, we're just going to paint over the bra here and now I'm not going to make you sit through this whole process because I mean there is a a, um, a select color range option in Photoshop but it won't it's never perfect I mean not for images like this where there's so much going on and the, you know you have extra areas of the bra over here where the the um, strings are sticking out um, it won't find that you need to actually manually paint these. It only takes a few minutes. You just want to get your brush really small around these areas and draw your your lines around here. Take your time to get them right. And, um, and then once you get that, just like a coloring book, then you start to make your brush bigger and, and go around the other areas. And um, once you have this completely done and hit the, uh, the extra areas of string over here, Spend your time getting those right. Zoom in as far as you need to go. So once you're done and you've outlined the whole bra and changed the whole color, I'll just turn this off and um, go down to the one that I did. 
this is what it's going to do. I've changed the color now on my hue set that I'm actually using here. To 213 was the color that I chose, and you can see as I move around, you can just see the actual color change. Um, but 213 was the color that I chose. And um, the saturation, I put it on 100, and the lightness, I brought it down to 47. Now, that's a little bit dark. So what I wanted to do after that was I said, okay, now I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. So on top of this layer, I went and I grabbed a selective color. Get out of here. Of course, Apple always wants to install something on your computer. Um, remind me never. Um... So on top of this layer, I, I opened a, uh, a selective color layer. So you go right here. This is your selective color. Click that. And what you want to do is you want to grab this mask, this layer right here. Hold down your Alt and drag it to here. So it's just going to copy all that drawing you just did. And hit Yes. Okay, so now this will be here and it's going to use the same exact mask that you took time drawing on there. And now you can start to further adjust the blues. You can go into the, the cyan and say, I want, yeah, I want to adjust this a little bit more because the blue wasn't totally perfect. And I brought the magentas down a little bit. If it's in the cyan, that I bring the blacks down. Yeah, brought the blacks down a little bit to brighten it up just a touch. Um, and then you can go into the actual blues, and I think it bring the, brought the blacks down a little bit more to brighten it up just a touch. If you move move the yellows around, it gives the blue a different color. And this is totally up to you, whatever color bra you want. What I would say um, when you're changing colors on something like this is just try to go for something that looks realistic, that matches as well. Once I was done moving these sliders around, the color that I ended up with was that, which is um, something that was punchy and, and poppy, but um, I still liked it for this image. It matched the paint, you know, relatively well um, without being exactly perfect. Um, so there you go. We've changed the color of the bra. It was red. Now it's blue. I like it. Cool. Let's go on to the next step. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Dodging Method 2, and we're going to give us some highlights on the skin. So this is what it's going to look like when we're done here. We're just going to draw some highlights onto the skin. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Dodging Method 2, run that action. It's going to set up your Dodge tool and put the shadows and the exposure exactly the way they need to be. Click on this layer here, the black layer. Just make your brush bigger and smaller and draw the highlights where you need them down the center of the nose. Every swipe, I usually do three to four swipes. I'll start out bigger swipe, one, make it a little bit smaller to build up the way the actual light would if you were having a highlight on the face. One swipe around the eye, two swipe, three swipe, four swipe. Every time getting a little bit smaller. Four. And I go two passes over the eye every time on this. And I'll hit the hair a little bit. And the highlight parts of the hair. The chin has a little bit of highlight. I like to hit the lips side to side. This is just to build contrast and pop the image out. And if you notice any areas look like a little, they're a little bit darker than others, you can actually use this tool um, to brighten them a bit. You want to hit in between the boobs here. On top of the boob, pretty much anywhere that's closest to the light. Pop it out a little bit, since that's what's naturally your eyes gonna notice if anything's wrong. 
the centers of the arms and then build up to the highest you know the highest point of the arm and if you go too crazy on this it'll ruin the image um, but it's definitely a necessary step okay so before and after it's bringing the image to life all right so on to the next step all right so let's focus on the eyes a little bit so um I'm gonna put this in a group for you guys so we can see what we're doing here. And I'll turn on everything we did to the eyes so you can see before and after. Before, after, before, after. Um, they were kind of mundane before and this is what we do to get the eyes like this. Um, let's turn all this off and we'll do it again. Now, in the, uh, in the description of this video, you can download the um, the brown eyes uh, curve set that I'll show you, um, you know, how to use. And uh, I use this on brown eye images a lot. Um, first thing we're going to want to do is go to dodging method two. This is how we first start on the eyes and run that action. It's just the first step in the eye. And it's like we did before, what you want to do is here is go way into the eye. And just draw and this is gonna accentuate the highlights of the eyes just draw around the um, the iris since there's not like any part of the eye that's, there's not like a real catch light there's a little ring light in there but um This is where the, um, the eyes are going to actually get brighter. So now we've brightened the eyes a little bit around the iris. This is the first step. You need to do this in this type of order to get um, this type of result. Okay, so now that we've brightened the eyes just a bit, that's the first step. We just brightened the iris a little bit. I'm going to show you how to make them brown. Um, the only thing you need to do is... This layer right here, you just Apple J, Command J, duplicate it, and now open this curves adjustment and go into your custom curves and um, select the brown eyes curves that I've given you earlier. It's actually in the description on YouTube. Download that curves adjustment. And now it's going to make the eyes brown. And you can bring that from 64% all the way up to 100 and now not only your eyes brown uh, punchy but they're actually brown so that that's just a curve that I gave you for free that accentuates there's a lot going on in this curve um, that accentuates the brown eyes uh, alright so the next step we want to do is we want to go in and do the uh, the eye sharper action and we're just going to sharpen the eyes as you can see it gives them a little bit more sharpness and clarity um, so the action is what it is it's really simple the only thing you need to do is just run um, eye sharper ppe set the flow to 75 percent or uh, opacity to 75 percent flow to 100 percent and on the black layer so 75 percent on the opacity 100 percent flow we want to paint white over the eye eyelashes as well and then you can see the eyes are sharp and punchy now um, and that's pretty much it now we've got the eyes um, before and after brown bright sharp all right now um, let's show you how to fix the uh, the eyes and the teeth to make them even whiter so this is with my uh, my teeth eye whitening and we can I just pull it up real high to show you before and after if you want to get you know salt to taste let's go in here that's before and that's after you see the eyes 
how they have a little bit of a collar cast. The teeth actually have a little bit of a collar cast. Now it's gone. So I'll just show you how to run that action real quick. It's super simple. Um, I smile, eyes and smile whiter, PPE. Run it on the black layer here. You just want to have 100% opacity, 100% flow, white brush. And just paint over the teeth. And it's going to remove any color cast that you have. On the teeth and you want to go into the eyes as well and remove the color cast this will make your eyes pop you can remove that eyelash if you want very simple I'm gonna leave it since this isn't like a extreme close-up this is sort of an environmental close-up um, so they are before and after and then you just change your opacity incredibly white not white at all incredibly white not white at all I like to stick around 65 ish 60 percent I don't like it to really go um, too far into fairy tale land all right so let's continue on with this Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the um, PPE collar pop. So run this PPE collar pop. And as you can see, it popped the colors a good amount. I'm going to bring that down just a touch to about 50%. And then I'm going to go to contrast pop PPE. Run that. That's going to. Um, really pop the contrast here so we're getting a nice punchy image I'm gonna bring this down from 40 percent to a little bit lower because the image here we're dealing with the black background right so what we're gonna do to negate that is I have um, background lights and darks run this set the opacity to 20 percent flow to 100 percent and you're gonna to want to paint white to make things brighter and black to make them darker so we're at 100 percent there that's just showing you how um, it works when it's over the top we don't want to do that we want to start about 20 so what we're going to do is instead of doing like a gradient filter we just want to draw in areas that we want to make a little bit brighter which i'm going to do around the the hair a little bit here um the sides of the the tops of her the top part of her hair and then on the floor here a little bit because um, we're on a dark wood floor and I don't want it to just be completely dark back here um, and this is a nice subtle action that um, I use outdoor a lot um, just to, to draw away highlights and um, darker areas and it the eye doesn't really pick up on it um, to the point where it's looking like somebody drew on your image at all. Um, so there you have. See now we've got contrast and we've got a little bit of um, a brighter area in there. I'm going to bring that opacity down just a little bit. Um, to wherever you're still satisfied with it. And what we're going to do now is just a few quick things to finish off this image. Um, I'm going to run the, the final toning part of this image, which is I'm going to tone the shadows. Shadow toning PPE. Now you see how we've went. This is why I like to do my shadows and my toning, my second layer of toning last or at the end of the image because this allows you to get the look you want. We've done all the colors. You have to get the colors, the contrast, um, the eyes, just everything that we've done with the skin and drawing in the highlights done first. 
and then you can decide if you want a crisp punchy image um, that you see or if you want a more faded matte look um, and this is how you get it you run that action you go in here and turn off all these colors all these colors that will be going into your shadows and you get to pick which color you want do you like blues in your shadows um, blue is pretty cool here uh, purple is kind of cool it's kind of dramatic um, yellow that's a little bit of a faded look uh, there's a lot of yellow in the image already orange um, green you can mix and match green and blue you know and um, so you can adjust the colors too. click on the blue here and it will bring up the, the different colors of blue you can use closer to black less of an effect higher on the other end way more of an effect um, stick around here in the middle and then just bring it down if you want less of it up if you want more blues closer it gets to black you won't be able to see it at all the higher it gets this way you'll be able to see a little bit of blue and it's only going into the shadows it's not affecting the highlight part of your image so there we have a blue it's subtle we can add a little bit of green to it if you want more of a matte look here and we can adjust the uh, the color of the green or bring the opacity down on the green so it's just slightly giving us a little bit of a, um, a color there so now our shadows went from super punchy to having a little bit of a, um, a dreamy painted look and I'm gonna grab this whole folder here the shadow toning that we just did and I'm gonna bring the opacity down a little bit just because I want this image to be punchy but just not so sterile just a little bit of um, shadows uh, um, color toning in the shadows next thing we're going to run is PPE complete image toning run that action this is similar but this is going to tone the overall image run, go in here and turn all of these off and now you get to figure out what you want your your final um, adjustment to be it's just going to give a slight hue. It's just like mastering an image to the image. Um, I think this like light greenish blue is perfect. Perfect, and the the blending level layer I have is soft light, and you can change it to overlay if you want. It doesn't make a big difference, but um, sometimes I like overlay as well soft light overlay you can barely tell the difference but it does make a difference on brighter images all right so I'm going to choose that light blue toning and um, I'm going to bring that down to about 40 percent now we need to sharpen the image and we'll be done with this well actually not I want to show you how to um, make the hair a little bit more epic um, go to here to stage sharpening run this action it's going to take a few seconds and it's going to sharpen your image as I've said before in, in my other videos um, on four different layers going from darkest to brightest the brightest part of your image should be sharper you can't just um, sharpen an image all in one um, all in one application it will it took me a while to make this but it actually it does help just take my word for it <laughs> um, I'll show you <clears throat> sorry I'll show you exactly what it does once it's done doing its thing um, the eyes will be the sharpest they're the brightest right um, the highlights on the face the teeth the, the bright parts of the paint um, the highlights going down the uh, the chest area will be sharper than say this area here um, just it says apply opacity to taste so it's hard to see on YouTube I know they compress the crap out of this stuff let's go way in and I'll show you off on so it does sharpen the whole image and it does it on multiple layers as you can see each one of these and I found like the sweet spot on each one of these 
So don't really adjust those. If you want to adjust anything, if it's too sharp, bring the overall folder down on the opacity of it. But um, this is a nice, sharp, punchy image. Um, so I'm going to leave it sharp and pretty much, you know, around the 80s to 90s. <laughs> All right. So final thing we need to do, something that's bothering me a little bit is this. Um, we're going to create a stamp visible layer, Alt, Command, Shift, E. And it's going to put it on top of everything that we've done so far. All this stuff, tough stuff above here is just what I did the initial first run when I edited it. But um, I'm doing it again right in front of you guys so you can see it. Um, now, and this, what we want to do is we want to go into Filter, Liquify. Her hair could be um, a bit more majestic, I guess. I just it could spread out a little bit more here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, choose this freeze mask tool, and I'm going to draw this over her face, hands, um, just any areas that I don't want to stretch by accident. This will pretty much freeze these areas from being stretchable. Um, when I'm stretching her hair out so you won't have to worry about mistakenly okay so this finger here forward warp, warp tool is what it's actually called I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna drag the hair out a touch just use your eye I know this is a little bit weird doing this on the floor because we have the lines in the floor we need to keep relatively straight But we're shooting with a 35, so things aren't, um, they've been warped a little bit just by the perspe perspective of the 35. And you can th uh, you can freeze all this, this arm too, but I'm not going to get that close to the arm to actually stretch it. Okay, um, and up here on this arm, it's kind of a little bit bold, I guess maybe the 35 was doing that a little bit. I'm going to push this arm in just a bit and I'm gonna hit okay okay so there we have um, the hair is a little bit more of a focal point now it's stretched we fixed the arm that was curved a little bit for whatever reason um, and that's really all I would do to this image right here. Um, it's nice and punchy. Um, I can show you one more trick if you'd like um, on this right here. Let's just duplicate that. And sometimes I do this. It's the secondary tool over here under the dodge tool. The sponge tool. And you want to duplicate your background layer because when you draw over certain things with the sponge, it's going to give them more color. It's like if you just want to pop the eyes or the color of the eyes or the paint here on the hand or right here on the chest or this or the paintbrush or the bra but you don't want to add color to every you know you don't want to just pump up the vibrance or the saturation or something like that. Um, this is a good way to do it. See what I mean? Off, on, off, on. And hit the lips again a bit, the eyes again. Like I said, this image is um, not your everyday image, so you kind of have to do steps that you would do, you know, just things in your bag of tricks that you know how to do. Um, so now, certain areas are a little bit punchier than others. And I like it. I think it looks great. So let's flatten this all down to where we came in with. After we put the um, after we put the uh, the Lightroom preset on, we did all our Photoshop fixes, actions that I showed you guys how to use. We came in with that. 
left out with that. That's pretty dramatic, right? Came in with that. We left with that. And um, very satisfied. I hope I've helped you guys and not talked your head off too much today. But um, it takes, sometimes it takes a lot to get, you put in the work to do the shoot. Why would you spend five minutes on the edit when you can spend 25 minutes on the edit and get what you really want out of it? And it'll get faster, you know, um, if this is new to you and you're learning, it'll get faster. You just develop your uh, your method. I do the same thing pretty much every time with the exception of uh, a couple areas um, that may, you know, may be specific to a, um, a certain image. Just like on the end there when we fixed uh, the uh, color pop with the um, sponge tool on certain things. It's just something that you learn as you go on. But I'll be happy to help you guys out and show you certain um, techniques. But um, that's where we're at with it. And next week I'll have something else for you guys. Alright, thank you.